Good evening and welcome to Information Please, your Peoria Public Library in the Air bringing you information about your library and your community. And tonight I have as my guest Norm Kelly, who's one of our community's uh, local historian, writer, and a true gem of knowledge. So I wanted to uh, capture some more of his history and memory right here on Information Please. Hi, Norm. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thanks good. for coming. Well, thanks. You have sent me some more stories that are going to be on our website, and sometimes there's nothing as great as having you talk about them. You know, so. <laughs> I, that's why I found out, Tricia, that people want to hear me talk about it. Yeah. They don't necessarily want to read it. Well, you a lot know? of people read it, but I they do. want to hear you too. They do. So. I want you to take us back. We're going to talk about some of Peoria's great public buildings okay. where great things have happened and people have visited and shows have gone on. Let's Tremendous. go back to the 1880s. Okay. What were people doing? 1880s in Peoria, we were cosmopolitan, sophisticated. We were busy. We truly were, uh, uh, what, a half a century ahead? of so many towns. And the reason why that was, of course, was the alcohol and the beer and the industry and the money. The very wealthy people in our town, when they saw a new product, let's just take a telephone, telegraph, I name it. In Peoria, I am an extremely rich man and I like that. So what I f quickly do, contact my lawyer, contact the new company, let's say a telegraph office, I invest my money. I invest in any brand new thing coming along. And I live in Peoria, Illinois, and I live in a marvelous home, as we all know. Yes. And I got all the money in the world. And so I, when I invest in it, uh, what f first thing that happens is I put it in my house. Yeah. That's exactly what happened to everything uh, technical. Mm -hmm. technical in those days, right? Well, just like today with all the advances, you know, who's the first one to have this smartphone? Or That's right. The first one to download movies from the <laughs> internet and who's got a 3D TV? I think Same you hit it. And, and, and so in Peoria, Illinois, uh, from Green Hut to who knows, we inherited all of those men from Boston, and New York. Mm -hmm. When I opened up my brewery, the first thing I did was look to the East Coast and here came this very expensive brewery man and his family, distilleries, bankers, you name it. They came to Peoria and they built homes. None better than the big guy though. You can bet, you can look through Peoria's history and see from Perry to Hamilton, you name it, all the way up to High. And, but, but the big homes, the massive homes were of course for the real wealthy. And that's exactly how in the 1880s we decided we, when I say we, we're talking about my ancestors and all the people around that lived here, decided to have an opera house. What? In Peoria, Illinois? That's yeah, insanity. An opera, house. an opera house. But Eugene Baldwin, who started the journal and the star, and was flat broke at one time, too. Yeah. His tremendous history, him and his daughter, Sydney. And so he alone decided to form a committee and finally brought in around 40 people and they decided to build a magnificent opera house, the Grand Opera House. And where do you think it would be? What would be your guess if you hadn't read my Somewhere stuff? on Main Street. That's what you would think and it was across the street on Hamilton where the county jail was, yeah. which is now what a county parking deck. That's uh. where it was. Three stories high, beautiful, magnificent, state of the art, is that what we call it today? Mm -hmm. With the heating and the lighting and the magnificent draperies and painting. It was rated by hot shots in the East Coast as among the top most beautiful opera houses in the United States. Now how many Peorians out there who are gangster fans and think we were rat-a-tat-tat at every corner have no concept of what this magnificent city was. Mm -hmm. And and of course the uh, Kellys, I suppose, are griping because, you know, the Blue Buds are building another building for themselves. But of course it was ours. It was the people. But on opening night when Emma Abbott came here, she was... She was a big deal. And of course uh, had her roots here. She was a 
a child of the city, they called her, magnificent opera singer, and had her own company. Mm -hmm. And a businesswoman, you would not believe, boy, you could write a, six books about her. And then they had a grand opening and all the carriages and the rich people, and a rental building sprung up where fools like me could actually wear a tuxedo for what, six dollars or something. <laughs> you got it? Oh, everything. And I stepped down out of that carriage with my beautiful lady and uh, uh, entered the place and it was all big procession. Wonderful, wonderful night. And then it went on. We had two, two, three, 235 of different types of shows in there of all kinds and brought people internationally from all over the world to good old Peoria, Illinois. And then later on during the year, they would have just simple things where ordinary folk could come, you know? But it was a beautiful, beautiful place and it burnt to the ground in um, 1909. And 1909. I mean- So we, it was around for almost 30 years. Yeah, we, uh, the city mourned it. I mean, mourned it. You know what, uh, Trisha, they didn't even go over there and clean it up for a few uh, weeks if people wanted to go over there and and Look mourn the it. loss so there it would be like today if the civic center weren't burned oh, down oh we or, couldn't handle that yeah, i don't think it, it but would. it truly was remarkable uh, for its time and it was a public building we didn't pay taxes for it of course yeah. they they when they say they they mean the rich they weren't rich baldwin i told you one time said all i've got is the ink uh, and a debt, that's all he said, you know, to, <laughs> to do his newspaper. But that was the same era that we launched the, the symphony, the ballet, mm -hmm. the Peoria Public Library. It's when the Peoria Women's Club, who's celebrating a big anniversary. Think of that. Year, they were, you know, those ladies started so much. They had a lot to do with starting the library, but oh, the women's yeah. club also, I'm sure, was involved in the opera house. Because I think you could just they, credit, credit they, the women. Yeah, they, well, they, they had the the interest in culture and mm -hmm. having it here. Don't forget they were wives. Mm -hmm. And when the wives said, look, You're right. Jean, <laughs> <laughs> I want this or I want that. Well, and, and they, they had got the time it. and the energy and the education That's to true. do that kind it of thing. It was a magnificent time in our history. And it went in into the gay 90s. Mm -hmm. You know, it was wonderful. Yeah. And I don't suppose the Kellys, the Ryans, the Feenies, and the McNeilas, I doubt. <laughs> if we were too much, we were involved in the railroad taverns and the saloons. Yes, yes. That was who we were. Okay, so it burned to the ground. There's no place to have grand entertainments anymore. No. And along comes the Central City Railway Company. That's right. 19... What's the railway got to do with the theater? Boy, wouldn't you just wonder about that, wouldn't you? And you know, <laughs> in 1900, mm -hmm. uh, the contract uh, for the Central City Railroad was coming up. And what does that mean? Well, the city uh, had just one, um, they weren't streetcars, they were being pulled by mules yeah. and horses, which later on become streetcars. But now, uh, I question in my article, was this a grand gesture? Oh, aren't we wonderful? Or was it flat out bribery? You read the article on the library and, and you just decide for yourself how that come about. But on Hancock and Adams, they owned a piece of property and they decided we will give the city of Peoria a civic center. Wasn't that wonderful? Do yeah. I have to ask you who ended up getting the contract? No. <laughs> but I don't look a gift horse in the mouth, right? Yeah. Dad, my dad used to say that, and I never got a gift, so I didn't really know what he meant. But what I'm trying to tell you is they built it for $57,000, and then the very next year, they gave us the keys. Us meaning mm -hmm. us, the people. Yeah, the people and it Peoria. was magnificent. And in it, you could have everything from carnivals, just think of that, carnivals, circus, you name it, it was all done inside the, the Colosseum, not the armory, yeah, the but Coliseum. the Colosseum. And it took me about a uh, half hour to learn how to spell Colosseum, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Colosseum. But it was a magnificent building and it, it just brought us all together because there was no hint of blue bloods or any of that thing. It was a gift to the city and uh, the people came again from all over with every kind of show known to mankind and we went there. And that too 
burnt to the ground. Burnt to the ground. 1920, it just burnt to the ground. And it and just stayed there in ashes almost for a long time. So give, I think people today wonder, well, how could something burn to the ground? But at the time, there was so many open flames around, and of course, the firefighting equipment. Did we even have fire hydrants in 1920? No. There, we had pumpers. They had the pumper trucks. And then we got boiler pumpers. And those things blew up a couple of times. I'm laughing, poor things. Yeah. And but the point is, and of course it was uh, the firefighters in our town work like clubs, mm -hmm. groups, and yes. they competed in baseball yes. and everything else. And so uh, any structure, and once it really got going, by the time they got there and and started attempting to put it out, it, it was, was generally it was gone. Mm -hmm. And in those days, no codes. Does anybody ever know what started either of the fires? Well, I do know they, they, the people who reported it and the people yes. who checked it, has said that our opera house had burned down from a flipped cigarette. But uh, mm -hmm. they don't seem to know what happened. You wouldn't think that massive building, we don't have that picture here, yeah. could just, and of course there was bricks involved and mortar. But the interior, of course, is all just wood, wooden bleachers. Oh, and, you know. And, what did the inside know. of the Coliseum look like? Was it bleachers or was no, it nice well, seats? Or? Nice seats in some areas, and then there were a lot of areas that were wide open, you know, where we could bring in an elephant. Yeah, and, uh, circus. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, a lot of meeting rooms. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, of course, in those days, everybody smoked. And you know, mm -hmm. we assume that could be. We don't. We know it wasn't well, a big electrical. Well, electricity was, you know, you know well, freight for, wires. And don't stuff. forget, it was a lot of it was some type of gas. Yeah. You don't forget that, you know. Yeah. Our, and so it's astounding that we didn't have more. But we had many violent, serious fires in our town, including churches and so many other buildings in our town. Uh, it just burnt. And then yeah. as the codes increased and finally the department got more sophisticated, finally we got, got mechanical things. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you look back, uh, we only have had 10 firemen killed in the line of duty. And I, frankly, am astounded at that figure, yeah. you know, because what, what would stop? I'm sure they were brave men like they are today. They would go right in anywhere. Yeah. You know? But that was truly one of the uh, marvelous buildings of our time. The and then, now did they do know, things like when the circus came to town, is this the old thing you think about that there was a parade? Oh yeah. And they went took a parade and everybody lined up to see the parade and then went to the circus or? We got down here waiting for them to bring those elephants. Oh. And I started, I think 1936 would be my first one. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're talking we're talking now yeah, behind well, that, yeah, but even in 36, it, it carried on every year. And then, of course, carnivals. Kids love carnivals, and we had them out in fields. Mm -hmm. We actually had them uh, up on university. We had, and as, right. as 13 and 14 year olds, that we would there were cornfield here, and then there was the area where they put the carnival. We spent our lives running around down here, <laughs> by the, sneaking in under sneaking the tents. Through, yeah, sneaking and, under tents. And, and I will field. admit, Tricia, that we saw probably a little too much for a little teenage <laughs> brat. I think, I'm just going to say, I think we saw a little too much. Could this be why you became a detective later? Could it be? I was always Snoopy, <laughs> yeah. you know, there was no doubt about it. And although I snuck in the armory plenty of times, mm -hmm. And, and the theaters too, but the attempt to, and wrestling matches, and of course, uh, oh, so I, that's you know, they had things like wrestling and boxing. You name it, just keep naming musical, every sport. Musical events, or they dances, had or? motorcycle jumps in there. Wow! And they had oh, and then the magnificent balls, the wonderful people dressed up, and of course, uh, down at the armory, oh, you name the band in the 30s and 40s, believe me, they, they were there. there. And of course, you know, we were 14, 15, 16, and even when we got a little bit older, uh, it still cost money to go, and of course, you'd have to have a suit, and you'd have to have something called a date, you know, and our dates were just girls that we looked at in high school, you know, and, <laughs> and then all this time, I had a few girlfriends that, but who, you would walk over to their house. Uh, that was yeah. the big day. Yeah. But boys, talk about sophisticated dancing. 
and oh, uh, yeah. at the Ingletier. Really oh, back absolutely. Then. And men yeah. dance now. Men don't dance. I know that's that. Why is wrong don't know. with them? I think their mothers don't teach them. Do you know what? This is the truth. Well, once I learned to dance, I always had a girlfriend. Yeah. It's the absolute fact. Uh, and I was taught by a, a lady out at the port, mm -hmm. a beautiful place where we used to go and wild bands and things. And this woman, I was just like 19 or 20, this woman came up to me and said, I think you're going to make a good dancer. And I thought she worked there, and I, but no. And her boyfriend came over and said, I forget her name, she said, why don't you teach him how to dance? And they played this song called Night Train. Oh, I remember that song. Wild. And she, and she taught me, and of course I'm sure they laughed at me a lot, but I was about six inches tall and she was a very tall, beautiful lady, and that's how I learned. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, then once I learned, I started looking around, looking, you know what I look for, Trish? Girls my size. <laughs> that's the honest truth. And so those places in Peoria, were, it was like that. Mm -hmm. In all these years, there were young, yeah. shy men and young, shy women. But and we dancing. had these all. We had marathons that lasted 72 hours and longer. Oh, yeah, I think that's something um, people forget about us, those marathons. Here so. in Peoria, major yeah. stuff. Inglaterra, the garden uh, a dance place. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the Armory had the big, beautiful bands. Yeah. So We've much. mentioned the Armory a few times now, so we should talk about the Coliseum burned down in that's May right. 1920. Mm -hmm. Then what happened? In 1925, Mayor Woodruff realized, hey, we got this wonderful piece of property in Hancock and Adam, we still own it. Right. And he, of course, he's the biggest deal maker probably in the history of the United States, let alone Little Peoria. He knew how to make deals, and of course he got the governor. He um, contacted the United States Army, the Illinois National Guard, and of course all the local politicians. And they said, this is what we're gonna do, and suddenly, they begin to build the armory. In 1924, they laid the first stone. And here, and, we have oh, a oh, little there picture it of is. that. Yeah. And then by 1924, when they lay the first stone, and you can see a lot of, look how everyone dresses. Oh, yeah. And it would be some little kids like me, you know, trying to look, try to see. Uh -huh. Everything that went on in Peoria, the kids came. Yeah. You never did see them, but we were always there. And of course, I don't come along until 1932. Yeah. But this armory then was built in the very next year. It was for the Illinois National Guard. It's technically, that's what it is, but you know who used it. Here we have a picture it. of it under construction. Yeah, so. it's marvelous. And just think, mm -hmm. in that period of time, the workers that yes. brought people here. Our yeah. railroads are to, going very strong it. by now, our, our breweries and our distilleries in 19... Uh, 25 are shut down. Yeah, we're going to talk then, about that next week. In the next one, okay. Yeah. So once the the armory then uh, is turned over to the Illinois National Guard, well, they don't use it very much. And as kids seeing the tanks and the jeeps and the soldiers and watching them march, well, we pl went down there an awful lot. And of course, Bradley played there and the Cats played there. Everybody, you name it, they uh, went on there. And they had indoor circuses which in fact sadly one uh, of the guys that actually was killed in there, I remember writing about that, and, and the, it went on forever. And everything that we had in there, just think of this, we're paying nothing, zero, and we're bringing in people, and people are having their dances, they're having their meetings, they're having uh, even LB Day there later on in life. We had major politicians who came and they all came to the armory and um, of course uh, it was revenue for us and we don't even own the building so Mayor Woodruff knew exactly what he was doing yeah. and then as you know now it, it's over there just decaying yeah well here's and, a uh, picture of it in its glory when uh, this was uh, yeah. some kind of dance group here's where we used to Run. Yep, the top balcony. Yeah, that was where kids went up there and ran. Crammed we, with people on that big floor. And and we basically ran around up there constantly. You know, yeah. That's all, <laughs> we, that's all we did. Yeah. We were just brats, I'll tell you. Yeah. So you tell know. me about during wartime, did they use the armory? For oh, the yeah. Army, armory for military purposes much then? That's where we spent tank. And we had all kinds of patriotic and military parades. And we also... Every time during the war, when this group of soldiers went off, including my three brothers, everybody came downtown. 
And we waved and hugged them and yelled at yeah, them. It's like people go mm -hmm. to the airport now. Exactly. Because that's where the Air National Guard is. So every time somebody takes off, there's a big deal out just there. Just like the honor flight that we just had, I yeah. went to in June. And, and then during the, the actual war years, we had uh, soldiers with, uh, in full uniform with fixed bayonets in, uh, at the federal buildings, including a lot of them there. Of course, the post office and other places around. And our factories turned out not total tanks, but all kinds of other parts. And so we spent our time watching them go by and then go by on the river. On the river, uh, there were uh, all these ships that were being assembled. They didn't float by, they were on barges. And we saw those. And over at the armory, they had tanks. And for a kid to climb on a tank, that was the greatest thing. And then our parades included of the parades and the jeeps and um, uh, even uh, small airplanes with their wings off. <laughs> I Go. remember seeing that. At the armory? And, and basically they all started right at the armory. That's where, why not? That's where all of them stuff was. Uh -huh. So it was a, for so a then, kid, it so, was wonderful. Yeah, so during World War II, that was all going on there. And then mm -hmm. the Korean War, I assume that kept up, but you were still able to use it for entertainment. Right? Yeah, I went away in the Korean War. <laughs> so you don't know what happened at I Armory. don't know what happened But then to, uh, you come back and it was still being used, well, I believe, sure. through the 50s and the 60s. And then, you know, Bradley, the 70s. All the big, uh, a lot of basketball mm -hmm. played there, boxing, wrestling matches, bowling. I know how they did it, Trisha, but they had bowling tournaments in there. So just think they had to assemble that somewhere in there, didn't oh, they? Oh, yeah, to put up a bowling, That's portable right. bowling alleys. And sadly, something. of course, it sits there now. It's, it's well, not how did it come to be empty? Just uh, once the war ended and all what we're talking mm -hmm. about just went away, yeah, because uh, it was still being used in the 80s for yeah. the Illinois National uh -huh. Guard. That's right, but not anywhere like, well, I remember. I don't remember events there in the 80s, but I do uh, know that the Illinois National so. Guard had at least a small presence. They had a supply sergeant um, mm -hmm. there because I knew him, and they had their monthly drills there. That's right. And then out, believe it or not, out at Expo Gardens right there is the reserves, the Army Reserve. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you think they'd have gone in there? But apparently... Uh, you know, as the building began to slip away, then it yeah. it, it was uh, then not owned by us any longer. And then uh, church and uh, some other people that and yeah. there it sits there right now. And it's a complicated uh, lease and and deed connected with it. Mm -hmm. And so who's going to tear it down? Who's going to do anything with it? And yeah. one day somebody is going to have to bring that up down in Springfield, and some big decisions are going to have to be made. Mm -hmm. Who actually? Uh, owns it, who's responsible, I, am, I yeah, won't be well, you, around. You had said in your story that in 1975 they did something to the interior. So that yeah, they did. Have, that must have been the point when the Illinois National Guard was using it. And, and I thought, meaning us, I thought for sure that, well, good, it's coming back. Mm -hmm. But it's not coming back. Well, I think probably it's the roof. I'd always heard that there was problems with the roof, and that's the hard thing to repair. And then once it started to leak, the whole thing destroyed. Yeah, once the roof goes, everything goes. But you know, the truth is, it'll never come back. We don't need it, if you really want to know the truth. No, we don't. We have our own now. civic center. Bradley has a renaissance yeah. area. And, uh, we have new hotels, remodeled hotels. We have, right. of course, the Peoria Public Library has our auditorium, which is smaller, but still can hold, you know, 250 people. And Absolutely. all of our meeting rooms, some people need meeting space. There's that for meeting And look space. at the one in the north. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, North Branch has a big meeting room. And, so and, there's yeah. many, many meeting places. And if there's a circus or something, it goes to the Civic Center. So in a sense, these were the original you know, Civic Center. Yeah, they were. Yeah, this is a postcard, which you and I were commenting before yeah. the show, that car obviously must have been a really old car. It's <laughs> somebody drove downtown Although in we, 1924. We, sure, they must have, but because uh, that, you know what, I got a feeling it was painted in there. Oh, yeah. Don't you think? It didn't well, even I think look... that's like an architectural rendering. I think so. Thing. I just don't think that that was it. So those were the real uh, civic buildings, and then, of course, our city hall, you know, we paid and for that city hall. a long time, 18, what, 90 yeah. something? And of course, city hall's been beautifully restored and mm -hmm. it nestles there next to the Civic Center and is a true treasure. 
And Absolutely. the older it gets, the more of a treasure it is. And we were proud of our of the courthouse they just tore down. Yeah, you they know. tore the courthouse down. That was in the era when they tore everything, everything down. Everything down. And I think if it was today, you wonder, would they tear it down or would they just gut it and redo the inside? We have strong enough people in town today that wouldn't let you get away with them. Yeah. You know, and it exactly. takes money and it takes a uh, uh, strong leadership. And we had a wonderful um, Peoria Players. I did an article on a, a building, mm -hmm. and they too, they uh, decided that we're not going to get any money from anywhere, so they built their own. And I did an article on that one, and it was a, a like a miniature civic center because not only was are it you talking them, about the one that's up in lakeview park or was this a previous no building? this was downtown okay. uh, uh, let's say uh, like on jefferson 401 or something jefferson okay. thank goodness i wrote an article about that i've forgotten about it but but the point i was getting at was that that the people decided mm -hmm. and the, the people decided okay we'll just do it we don't need the united states government and of course that's who we were yeah. we that's who we were i mean yeah. we we didn't wait around for somebody to give us something. There were strong people in this town. Yeah. And don't well, forget that. Well, I think them. there still are when you look at our, our referendum for the library passing As, by 72%. Absolutely. That know, took leadership. Yeah. Look at the Civic Center, how it yeah. split. Yeah, the Civic get Center and, and you know, expanded. And it was a battle. Yeah. But it, the people who have a picture of your yeah. city, people just People who have a that. vision. Of what brings Just think in. that in 1835 we were a town and there were fools walking around said, you know what, we ought to be a city. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there were people saying, what do you want yeah. to be a city for? What, what, what good would that do? Yeah. And then in 1845 yeah. we became a city right. and we had one square mile. Well, and, and on that note, we're going to stop here because right. then next week we're going to talk about Prohibition. Uh -huh. Peoria was a really big town and had lots of money. And things change. Absolutely. So thanks, Norm. All right, thank you. I'll be back next week with Norm on Information, please.